All set with our next formation, Lieutenant? Yes, sir, all set. I call this formation the platoon wedge. You've done a good job on it in your extended order drill. Now let's see what makes it tick. The wedge is a formation of readiness. In this formation, a platoon is ready to fight in any direction with a reasonable chance of giving a good account of itself. Therefore, it is a valuable formation to use in an obscure situation, particularly when the platoon is involved in an advance that separates it from its company, such as a mission on a flank. Of course, in any mission where the platoon is on its own, it must provide for all-around protection, as this platoon is doing, to the front, to the flanks, to the rear. These small security groups are also charged with giving the warning in event of air attack. The platoon cannot afford to send out additional men as AA lookouts. To do so would cut too seriously into its strength and render an already difficult control problem still more difficult. A platoon in this formation is not a profitable target for air attack anyway. It's hard to see and hard to hit. This is about the way it looks to an aviator. On the other hand, this is how a careless platoon might look to an aviator. This platoon leader has assembled his men to give them some instructions. He has forgotten all about cover and concealment. He has forgotten all about enemy aircraft. This is what happens to people who forget for even a moment in modern war. This is what I want you to remember about the wedge. It's a formation of readiness. Use it as the basis of your dispositions in obscure situations. Are there any questions about the wedge? Yes, sir. Uh, you say that this is a formation of readiness is prepared to fight in any direction. Well, why is that true, sir? Now you're talking, Corporal. Make sure you understand the why of everything we do in this man's army and you'll end up a field marshal. I think I can best answer your question by comparing the wedge with some other formation of the platoon. Say the platoon column. Let's take another look at the platoon column and see how it stacks up as a formation of readiness. Suppose this column formation was struck suddenly in the flank. It could do only one thing. Face to the flank, hit the ground, and return the fire. The entire platoon could be pinned to the ground at the same time by a sudden flank attack. In such circumstances, there would be no maneuvering element left. The whole platoon would be committed willy-nilly and against its will. Now look at the wedge in the same situation. It is struck in the flank. But here only one squad is immediately affected, the squad on that flank. The leading squad and the left flank squad now lend depth to the formation, and one or both may be used as a maneuvering element. In a frontal attack, we have a different situation. Within effective range of observed small arms fire, the platoon column is highly vulnerable. Moreover, it takes time to deploy this long, deep formation. In other words, the platoon column is no more designed for a fight to the front than it is for a fight to the flank. But look at the wedge. It requires only an instant for these squad columns to fan out in place. Again, we have initial contact made by one squad. Again, we have the remainder of our command in hand to employ as we see fit. And all this in the matter of a moment. Thus you can see that the very shape of this formation tends to prevent the entire platoon from being nailed to the ground at one time, regardless of the direction of the attack. In short, the platoon in the wedge formation is like a boxer on guard, ready to strike in any direction or ready to fend off attack from any direction. Does that explain why we look on this as a formation of readiness, Corporal Gaither? Yes, sir, I see it now. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, let's take a look at our next distinctive formation of the platoon. A platoon disposed in this fashion is said to be echelon to the right. Note the stair-step effect. 
The stairs running to the right and down. Here is the same formation, echelon to the left. Here the stair steps run to the left and down. Echelon is an unfamiliar word to most of you. Take a good look at it so you'll recognize it the next time you see it. This formation, or some modification of it, is almost always used by a platoon in the approach march when it has an exposed flank. When we say that a flank of a unit is exposed, we mean there is no friendly unit on that flank and that therefore that flank is open or exposed to direct enemy attack. You may have an exposed flank in any of the following situations. One, when you are the outermost unit on a flank. Two, when an unprotected gap exists between you and the unit on your flank. Three, when you have lost contact with a unit on your flank. Four, when a unit on your flank is held up or has fallen behind. In each of these situations, you are exposed to surprise attack from the flank. Therefore, you must adopt a formation that will give you the greatest measure of protection against such an attack. Ordinarily, the best formation for this purpose is our echelon, or stair step formation. Supplemented by the necessary scouts to the front, a small flank patrol or flank guard, and if the situation requires it, a small rear guard. These security groups search dangerous localities close to our route of march. Move to high points where they have an extended view in the threatened direction, and are always on the alert for ambush or impending enemy attack. Our stair-step formation is ideal on an open flank because it presents a discontinuous and inconspicuous target. And because seldom, if ever, will an attack from the flank or the front be able to pin the entire formation to the ground simultaneously. This means that one rifle squad and often two rifle squads, will be available to the platoon leader for maneuver. Moreover, the squad or squads not involved initially are well situated for a flanking maneuver. For example, if the leading squad is struck from the flank, the second and third squads are in a good position to attack the enemy with flanking fire or to outmaneuver him. Should we hit resistance to the front, only our leading squad is initially involved. The second may be used to reinforce fires of the leading squad and nail the enemy down while our third squad moves around to take him in flank and rear. This is what I want you to remember about our echelon formation. We use it principally when our flank is exposed or unprotected, and we supplement it with the usual platoon scouts to the front, with a small patrol on the threatened flank, and if necessary, with another small patrol to the rear and toward the threatened flank. Are there any questions? Good.